I want 30 sliders, five french fries, and four large cherry Cokes. I want the same exact make mine diet Cokes. Chuck. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 fast food scandals. Not fast food, good food quickly. Fast food might be delicious, but for this list we'll be looking at some fast food controversies that left a bad taste in our mouths. Don't leave us a fast comment, leave us a good comment done quickly. Number 10, BK Horse Meat. Whopper, 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 Junior Double, Triple Whopper, Flame Grill Taste with Perfect Toppers, I rule this day. Did you hear the one about the man who walks into a bar and the bartender says, why the long face? The man replies, because I just ate a Whopper. Okay, that's not a real joke, but it sounds like one that could have been heard during a late night TV monologue back in 2013, when news broke that Burger King had been using horse meat in their hamburgers. Wait, Hugo, what are you saying? I'm saying that the beef inside that box wasn't beef at all. It was horse! Horse? Oh my gosh! Huh. Huh. The truth is that trace amounts of horse DNA were found in the meat facility which supplied Burger King. Luckily, testing done on BK Burgers was negative for equine, but it did come out that a handful of samples from the plant tested positive. The fast food chain claims that quality is the top priority, so let's hope they follow through on that. Oh my god, Teddy, we don't sell horse anymore. Oh, come on! I can't stop thinking about it! I loved it! Number 9, One Too Many Ks. Crispy cream donuts are so good that it's almost impossible to get home without eating one. In 2015, a Krispy Kreme location in the UK created a promotion that would allow clients to come in and decorate their own donuts. Mmm, donut. Mmm, donut. On the surface, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, we love the idea of decorating donuts. The problem arose when they called the promotion the Krispy Kreme Club. However, instead of spelling club with a C, they kept with the initials of their name and spelled it K-L-U-B, which made the acronym for the event that they then even promoted right on their Facebook page, KKK. How no one looked at that and said, hold on a second, is beyond us. They sure know how to spoil a celebration. Oh, Christ, you gotta say that again. Needless to say, they pulled the promotion and the company issued an apology. Number eight, Starbucks ice poop. Kopi Luwak, the rarest beverage in the world. Take a whiff. In 2017, a BBC investigation took samples from three UK coffee chains, Costa Coffee, Cafe Nero, and Starbucks. The samples were taken from iced coffee drinks as well as chairs, tables, and trays at multiple branches. While you might expect certain bacteria to be found given that they didn't take swabs from the bathrooms, you probably wouldn't expect feces to be one of them. But alas, that was the case. This coffee smells like It is Oh good, then it's not just me. While bacteria found in feces was discovered on 7 out of 10 Costa Coffee samples, Nero and Starbucks did only a little better with 3 out of 10 poopy samples. Maybe it's just us, but we'd like our fecal bacteria on 0 out of 10 samples. Uh, anyway, we were just talking, and we'd like to go home now, so uh, thanks to the bruises and you can keep the uh, stool samples. Number 7, the Wendy's finger. It tastes like feet. <laughs> I like it. While Rachel's English trifle might have tasted like feet, we definitely prefer that over an actual body part making its way into our meal. In 2005, a woman at a Wendy's in San Jose, California claimed that she found a severed finger in her chili. Following the incident, Anna Ayala did what many of us would do. She sued the company. However, prior to the incident, she also did something that most of us would never do. You guessed it, she planted the finger in her chili. Oh, that's ill-advised. An investigation revealed that Ayala had paid one of her co-workers $100 for his fingertip, which he had lost in an accident in an attempt to defraud Wendy's. There were very real consequences for this, and Ayala went to prison for four years. You watch yourself. There is room on my enemies list now that the cafeteria ladies finally told me what's in the chili. Number six, Papa John is Papa God. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John. In 2018, the Papa John's pizza chain went without its Papa. John Schnatter, the founder of the company and the titular Papa John, was removed from his office at the company headquarters in July. Don't feel bad, though. The move came shortly after Schnatter had resigned from the company following reports that he had used a racial slur during a conference call just a few months prior. Am I on speakerphone? No, absolutely not. Speakerphone, no. No, I wouldn't do that. Yes, I am. I, I can hear the echo. This, however, was just the tip of the scandal iceberg for Schnatter, who in 2017 made headlines when he blamed slow pizza sales on the NFL players kneeling during the national anthem. The ingredients and the pizza might be better, but the founder sure wasn't. Up next is Papa John dyeing his eyebrows. 
I sleep with him to find out, though I am fairly confident the answer is yes. Number five, protesting McDonald's. In 1986, a few protesters who were part of an environmental organization known as London Greenpeace began distributing anti-McDonald's leaflets around London. The leaflets titled, What's Wrong with McDonald's? Everything They Don't Want You to Know attacked the company on multiple issues, including animal cruelty, environmental destruction, and low wages. Tear it down! Reagan smash! Reagan smash! Needless to say, Mickey D's was none too happy about this, and they sued five members of the group in what would become as the McLibel case. The case spent over 10 years in the courts, and while the final judgment did rule in favor of McDonald's on many counts, the judge also ruled that some of the protesters' claims were true. We're sure McDonald's wasn't ba da ba 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 loving that. I hate, hate it, I hate it! <laughs> Number four, Taco Bell's mystery meat. Bite into the new steak quesadilla today and see how it feels to think outside the bun. Taco Bell has encouraged its customers to think outside the bun, but according to a lawsuit filed back in 2011, they should have been encouraging us all to think outside the meat. The lawsuit claimed that Taco Bell shouldn't be allowed to call what it puts in its creations beef because it found that only 35% actually was, with the rest being fillers of one kind or another. Taco Bell, as you can imagine, vehemently denied the allegations and eventually the class action suit was pulled. Still, the company's arguments against the 35% claims was that their stuff was actually 88% beef. Our seasoned beef is 88% premium ground beef and 12% signature recipe. If you want to see that signature recipe, just go to TacoBell.com. It's right there. There's no mystery here. No misterio. Is it just us, or is that still about 12 percentage points lower than it should be? I'm going to pump those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers in this racket. Number three, BK women belong in the kitchen. The IOW is a bunch of sexist jerks who need to get back in the kitchen where they belong and leave the real feminist work to actual feminists like Ron Swanson. Oh my God, what is happening? As of 2021, Burger King had a very worthy and positive goal to empower more women to pursue the culinary arts. In accordance with said goal, they launched a scholarship program to help female employees of the chain reach their chef dreams. If you're wondering why you never heard about it, it may be because of how they announced the program on Twitter. How many women do you see in this kitchen? Well, I... <laughs> Only me. Why do you think that is? Well, I... While the second and third tweets in the thread describe the scholarship program and deals, the first tweet read as follows. Women belong in the kitchen. Dude! Phrasing! Turns out Burger King isn't just the home of the Whopper. It's also the home of the terrible social media managers. Number two, McDonald's hot coffee. People spill hot coffee on themselves at McDonald's. They get $50 million. You don't think after the hell he put us through we deserve a measly couple hundred grand? You might not recognize the name Stella Liebeck, but you probably know who she is. Liebeck is the woman who sued McDonald's after spilling hot coffee on herself. Hot coffee! <laughs> you idiot! You gonna spill hot coffee all over me, huh? What are you, just a big, dumb, stupid, doofy idiot with a doofy idiot hairdo? She's often been portrayed as the butt of a joke, someone trying to make some easy money, but the truth is a little different. The McDonald's coffee she accidentally spilled on herself wasn't just hot. It was somewhere between 180 to 190 degrees Fahrenheit. And it didn't just burn her. It third degree burned her, requiring skin grafts and eight days in the hospital, followed by two more years of treatment. And as far as money goes, all she initially asked for was $20,000 to cover her medical expenses. It wasn't until McDonald's refused that she sued them for gross negligence. This story is insane. McDonald's had a policy that almost killed someone and it took Stella's lawsuit to change it. She should be considered a hero, but because of these companies, we treat her like a punchline. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Bad Jared. Look at us now, we're living right, and we owe it to the man who showed us the light. From 2000 to 2015, it was almost impossible to be a consumer of television and not know who Jared Fogel was. Fogel had lost over 200 pounds while at university in the 90s, and part of his diet plan involved walking to Subway for meals. Well, Subway loved that story, and they loved Jared so much that they made him a prime spokesperson for the company, putting him in over 300 commercials in that 15-year span. Everything seemed to be going well for Fogel and Subway until an FBI investigation led to Jared's arrest on charges involving minors. Jared Fogel, former Subway spokesperson, was the ultimate weight loss inspiration story. That's how I became half the Jared. 
But today, a shocking fall from grace. Fogel was sentenced to just under 16 years and is currently doing all his walking in the Federal Correctional Institution, Englewood in Colorado. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.